Hi, future GISPs. I'm going to teach you everything that I learned to easily pass the GISP exam so you don't have to spend years reading textbooks, getting degrees, paying for prep courses, and searching the internet for information like I did. In this video, I'm going to teach you everything I learned about data resolution. Data resolution is the fourth section under the Geospatial Data Fundamentals category of the GISCI Geospatial Core Technical Exam list of knowledge categories. Let's get started with section 204, data resolution. Resolution. Image resolution is the most commonly known type of resolution. Images are raster data types, so image resolution works just like raster resolution. A higher image resolution has a small cell size, higher DPI, records more detail, and causes a larger file size. Lower image resolution has a large cell size, lower DPI, records less detail, and causes a smaller file size. Dots per inch, or DPI. DPI is the amount of cells that exist per inch in a raster or image resolution. Raster resolution. In raster data sets, resolution is the cell size. Raster resolution should be high enough to capture the required detail, but low enough so computer storage and analysis can be performed efficiently. Higher raster resolution causes a smaller cell size, higher accuracy, slower display speed, slower processing speed, and a larger file size. Lower raster resolution causes a larger cell size, lower accuracy, faster display speed, faster processing speed, and a smaller file size. Here are some factors to consider when selecting a cell size. You should consider the spatial resolution of the input data. You should consider the application and analysis that is to be performed. You should consider the size of the resultant database compared to your disk capacity. and you should consider the desired response time. Raster resampling. Resampling to a larger cell size will reduce accuracy and file size. Resampling to a smaller cell size will increase file size and not change accuracy. Upsampling to a smaller cell size has no inherent benefits. Downsampling to a larger cell size will reduce file size. Radiometric resolution. Radiometric resolution is the amount of different measurements that a data band can record. Radiometric resolution equals 2 to the power of the number of bits used to record a band of data. Four bits can store 16 different values. Eight unsigned bits can record 255 different values. Eight signed bits can record values from negative 128 to 127.
Temporal resolution. Temporal resolution is the frequency at which data is measured at the same location. Once a week is a higher temporal resolution than once a month. Spectral resolution. Spectral resolution is the ability of a sensor to distinguish between wavelength intervals in the electromagnetic spectrum. Most remotely sensed data in GIS consists of measurements of visible light or infrared intervals of the electromagnetic spectrum. Vector resolution. Vector resolution is the smallest difference between adjacent positions that can be recorded. Vector resolution determines the minimum feature size that can be recorded. Resolution and scale. A map should have the appropriate resolution for the scale at which it is meant to be viewed. Higher resolution data should be used for larger scale maps. Lower resolution data should be used for smaller scale maps. Here is a list of suggested image resolutions for different map scales. Scale. Scale is the amount of reduction between the real world and its graphic representation. Scale is usually expressed as a ratio or equivalent. Display scale. Display scale is the scale at which the map looks right. Data density. Data density is how many features per area are stored. Now you know everything I learned about data resolution to easily pass the GISP exam. This section isn't very long because resolution is not a complex topic. You can find much more information about vector datasets, raster datasets, scale, and spectral resolution in other sections. Don't forget to thumbs up and subscribe to my channel so I can keep helping people pass the GISP exam and achieve the rewarding careers in GIS that they deserve. You can also find everything I learned to pass the GISP exam in my book, The Ultimate GISP Exam Study Guide, available on Amazon. My study guide is an easily understandable, comprehensive, graphical, all-in-one resource for passing the exam. You can find the link to my study guide in the description below. Thanks for joining me and congratulations in advance on passing the GISP exam.